I'm really excited to talk to the Pali Jukes today. The Pali, tell us more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, well, I'm um, firstly a, a first generation British Indian. Um, so my parents are immigrants to this country. Um, I grew up in Southwest London, so not very exotic, but um, it was an immigrant household nonetheless. So it was very multicultural. And at school, I really enjoyed geography. Um, it was sort of always a passion of mine from about 12, 13, I seem to remember. And I had a really good geography teacher at school. And um, yes, yeah, so it kind of took off from there. My, my love of sort of learning everything about the planet and the earth. And, and um, that naturally led me to do geology at university. And, and then I sort of fell into geotechnical engineering because I didn't really know what career I was going to do when I left uni at age 22 um, and a friend of mine was doing geotechnical engineering and I just went along and thought I'd give it a go and here I am today co-founding a, a, an engineering company of 14 years now so um, yeah it's been there it's been a, an interesting roller coaster but um, it all started with a love of geography back in the, when I was a teenager. Um, I, so. I love that Dipali. <laughs> Um, tell us a little bit more about your company, Ground and Water. You are the co-founder. What do you do on a daily basis? Um, these days, I spend my time, a lot of mentoring and coaching my senior leadership team. Um, so making sure that we've got the next set of leaders coming up through. I also do quite a lot of sort of networking events and going out to see clients um, and other events and, and just sort of being the face of ground and water in the industry. Um, and I also like to do a bit of uh, just bring, you know, the, the brand awareness for our company, but also for women and, and girls in STEM and trying to promote more women to come into, into STEM. So I do a bit of work around that for schools and other charities and, and other initiatives that I've taken on um, that will hopefully inspire more, more women into the industry. So I, I sort of split my time between doing all of those things and um, and then when I have a bit of spare time, um, a bit of marketing and, and sales as well. So, yeah, but, but mainly getting out there and, and spending time with people and, and with women, especially um, to try and inspire them to come into the industry. Dipali, you obviously work in an industry that's predominantly male right yeah hi how what motivates you most do you think being in that industry with all the different roles you hold you're the governor of a school you mm. obviously run this company you are very involved in uh, empowering women and girls in stem what is sort of your main motivator I think it's quite personal because I've been in the industry over 21 years and I think it's only in the last couple that I've seen people that look like me. So I've always been a, an outsider looking in. Um, even now I can walk into a room and there'll be 50 white males and just me. And, and I think that really motivates me that things need to change, the systems need to change um, because I don't want that to continue for the next generation. Um, and also I'm a mother of three and my youngest is is a girl and I want to make sure that she doesn't have to face the same challenges that I did. Um, so that's sort of where the, the governor side of it and making sure that children have a, a really solid foundation and education and and that we're actually going into schools and, and talking to children at a really young age to change those gender stereotypes. So there is very much a gender stereotype that an engineer should be a, a white male and, and perceptions are changing, but there's, there's still a long way to go. So I think that's that's mainly what motivates me that I don't want the same struggles with the next generation of women and girls. Dipali, I really am very grateful for this uh, level of service that you have because I think it's so important and we all know that the more diverse we are, the better we function. So I sometimes think I'm not quite sure why it keeps on perpetuating a system that in fact is less efficient. What do you think is, I mean, is there anything in your opinion that really, uh, what really changes those stereotypes or that status quo with your work with girls in STEM? What do you think is the thing that really makes a difference? 
I think it's you can't be what you can't see and so representation matters it really does and I've, I've gone out and spoken to young girls and they feel inspired by the fact that I am the owner of, a, of an engineering company and I've had some of the women in my company saying well I applied because I saw you and and because I can see that you know there is a career pathway for women and so I feel it's my duty to pay it forward to, to make sure that the you know women are represented across all different industries and um, I think you know young girls at schools if they don't have those role models um, they've got nothing to aspire to in that particular career and so yeah I think I think there's there's a like I said, a lot of work to be done, but I think times are changing and there's a lot of passionate women out there who, who are ready to step up. So I'm just, uh, I think it's the right opportunity at the right time for me. Definitely, Dipali, and this yeah. is why we're so thankful that you're on here with us as well. Dipali, what do you think is your biggest quality? Oh, my superpower? Um, well, I have three kids. And a husband to manage. I think I'm very good at organizing and planning. And I have been told, I think, because I have to plan everything out, that I make sure that I follow through and everything I've committed to, to do and signed up to. So I think my, yeah, I think my strength is I, I will show up and I will always prepare and make sure I'm ready to do the job because I I feel you shouldn't do it unless you are ready to, um, to do it properly. So, yeah, planning and organizing and execution of, of tasks I think that's that's probably how I've got to 14 years um leaving the company brilliant thank you so much Dipali what uh tips would you have for younger girls that want to get going to STEM they're maybe quite young they realize that mm -hmm. they're really passionate about it what tips would you give them I think assistance you are going to get challenges and you're going to get barriers and you're going to get people saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. Or are you sure about that? And, you know, and, and I think just persistence and keep pushing forwards. And even after failures, and I've had many, you know, you get yourself back up again and, and you keep going forwards and you sometimes have to ignore all those voices in your own head as well. I think women especially suffer from foster syndrome and lower confidence. And sometimes we don't go for the job unless we, Think we can do absolutely everything on that job description whereas men um you know if they can do about 50 percent of it or 60 percent of it they're you know they're happy with that and they go for it and uh, so i think we kind of get in our own way a little bit so i think it's um just to go for it and not worry too much about the failure and the outcomes because i think if you stay um persistent in your quest then you will get there yeah, yeah thank you i read that all the time and i hear it all the time oh, that it's true and i suffer from it as well yeah, yeah yeah absolutely we only ever go for it if we think we're perfect we tick all yeah. the boxes yeah, yeah great great <laughs> tip thank you Dipali, what are your plans your goals your dreams for your future your family's future your business future well, I've been, for the business, I've been doing it for 14 years and, and I want to get it to a stage where it can work really efficiently without me so that I can go off and do more of these passion projects and go out and talk in more schools and and, um, and just really inspire more girls into the industry. So that's partly the, the plan for the company to, to carry on with the, the growth goals that we've got planned. Um, we've got them all set up for the next three to five years. So it's really just to follow through on those. And, and personally, I, yeah, I want to do more work with schools, um, more seasons with the podcast and see where that takes us. Um, more industry talks, I think just, just getting out there and, and being that visible role model. Um, I think visibility is key and, and just reaching people who don't know that we, we're a whole community of women in STEM and not a lot of people know about us yet, I don't think. So I think there's a lot of um, awareness work to do around that. And, and yeah, I think just pursuing more of the projects that I've been doing. But um, one personal one I would quite like to do is um, go and do some work for the UN as well. So be a UN delegate uh, and just working towards gender equality as well. Amazing. Dipali, it's so <laughs> inspiring. Thank you for this really inspiring talk. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you, Stephanie.